Hello students, this video is to show you how to complete the results section of your science fair project. The document that you see on your screen is the same thing that you received in class called the results instructions. The first thing that I want you to notice is that this part of the science fair project has three sections to it. The first is the paragraph section. This is going to be at least two paragraphs. The first one is going to be a summary of your numbers or your averages. And the second part is going to be a description of any qualitative data that you've observed while collecting your data. The second section is the tables. That's going to be all the data tables that houses all of the actual numbers from your experiment. And the third section is for graphs. It's going to be either bar graphs or line graphs, depending on what kind of data you collected. And then there's also this optional section called statistical analysis. I'm going to make a separate video for you on how to complete that section. Uh, that's a section that's going to basically strengthen your argument when it comes time for you to say whether or not your hypothesis was confirmed or denied. Um, and again, that's going to be in a separate video. So here's where you need to start. First thing you need to do is you need to go to Google Docs and you need to open up a brand new document and please title it results. The first thing that we're going to do is actually skip past the first paragraph section because it's actually a lot easier to write your paragraphs after you have some data into tables and graphs. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to insert a table. And that's up on the insert bar. You're going to go to insert table and it's going to prompt you to tell it how big of a table to make. So the first thing that you're going to do is you need to think about the number of rows. For rows, you want at least one row for every trial that you've done, plus you're going to want another row for the titles, and then finally a last row for your averages. So all together, said and done, we're going to want 12 rows. That's 10 for our trials plus 2. And then you're going to want a column for titles, and then an additional column for every type of independent variable that you've collected. So the one that I'm going to show you has three uh, varieties of the independent variable, so I need four columns. Now that we have a table set up, what we're going to do is start filling in the information. So for this make-believe data table, I'm going to say that I was testing the shape of a model airplane wing, and I was testing how long uh, its hang time or its glide time was. So I've got wing, oops, wing shape one, wing shape 2, and wing shape 3. And then all along this side, I've got to put in the titles here as well. So this would be uh, all of the trials. So I'm going to label this column trials. And I've got trial 1, 2, 3, all the way down to trial number 10. And then the last one's going to be my averages. Now that we've got everything all set up, the next step of this is to put in the actual numbers. Now, an important thing here to remember is that when you're putting in your numbers, you really need to leave out units. And this is going to help you in just a minute when we start doing some calculations with it, because the computer doesn't recognize units when it's trying to do math with your numbers. So I'm going to just start putting in my data. I'm going to say for wing shape one that these are the seconds that it was in the air. And I'm going to leave the averages row blank for the moment because we're going to actually have the computer do that for us. Let's say that wing shape 2 is much more successful at staying in the air at 78. And then maybe wing shape 3 was not so good. Okay, now that we've got our numbers put in there, we're going to actually go ahead and start making. Uh, our graph and calculating our average. So remember at any point along here, if uh, you need to pause this video and rewind or pause to catch up, please remember that you can do that. So the first thing that I'm going to do is go and make a brand new document for spreadsheets. So this is what it looks like. This is still in the Google suite of tools and you should have a blank spreadsheet. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go back to my table that I just made, and I'm going to copy all of the things that I've just made. So I'm going to go Control C for copying, go back to my spreadsheet, Control V to paste it all in there, and now I have the exact same thing. And it's not super pretty over on this side, but that's okay. We're just going to be using it to make our, 
uh, our graphs and to do some calculating. So here's where we're going to start. The first thing that we're going to do is actually figure out our averages. The way that you do that is actually pretty simple. So what you do is you do equals, and what you're doing there is by telling the computer that you're going to want it to calculate something. So equals, and I'm going to start typing in average, and you'll notice that it pops up with a few different options, and average is the one that I want, so I click average. And now the computer wants to know it wants the average of what? And this is in my way, but I want to do the average of all of these wing shapes in the first column. And then I close my parentheses, and you'll notice right here it's saying the average of all these cells from B3 down to B12, and that's what we want from B3 down to B12. You hit Enter, and it calculates that average for you. Now here's the beauty of this program. You could go ahead and retype into this cell the average from C3 down to C12, but that's a lot of work. So what's kind of cool about this is you can copy the cell that we just calculated an average in, and you can paste it to these other two cells. And what's cool about this is that it knows that you want the average for the cells above it, not a repeat of all the B columns. So it's calculated for us all of the C, or all the wing shape 2, and all of the wing shape 3 right here in the bottom for us. So now we're going to take this information. I'm just going to Control c copy it, go back over to the table that we made on the Google Doc, and I'm going to paste it into our cells so that we have complete data there. And actually, I'm going to make this a little bit neater since I'm over here. I'm going to copy, or highlight rather, all of those cells, and I want to center everything in those cells just to make it look a little bit more neat. Okay, so now I've got my averages moved over. Now it's time to actually make a graph. And we're going to make actually two graphs. The first one is going to be for all the trials. So I'm going to highlight in my table everything except the averages row, because we're going to do another graph for that in just a minute. And then I'm going to go insert chart. And it knows what kind of data I want in that chart based on what I've highlighted. And there are a few things that we have to kind of mess around with. First thing I'm going to do is I want it to be a column chart. So I've got to select the correct uh, graph type. And you can see what it's going to look like over on the right as you play with some of the options. And there are a few things that we need to change. So one of the things that the computer thinks is happening right now is that this column trials is something that I want graphed. And that's not what I want. I want it to use that as labels. So I select this box that says use column A as labels. So now it puts my trials on the y-axis over here. And it's got my wing shapes color-coded, so that's right. And you can go through these other options, and there's, there's quite a lot of things that this thing is capable of doing. But for our purposes, we're going to leave it mostly as it is. And so I insert the graph, and I'm just going to move it over a little bit so I can still see what I've already done. And there are a few things that we've got to mess with still. I'm going to change the title. So the title of this is going to be um, going to be average, or not average. It'll be flight time of a model airplane. Oops, airplane for different wing types. Okay, so I've changed my title almost. If I needed to press enter, so flight time for model airplane with different wing types, enter. So now that changes my title. I'm also going to change a couple of the axes. So this is trials. And the horizontal axis, oops, I'm sorry, it's all the way around. Bottom axis is trials. And my horizontal axis is flight time. Okay. Now we have our data table set up. And we're going to take this thing once we've got it the way that we want it. And I'm going to see if I can center that. Oops, I'm doing it for the wrong thing. I'll do that later. 
I'm going to grab this, gra this uh, graph, copy it, control C. I'm going to go back over to my document and underneath my table, give myself a space, I'm going to paste it. Now, one of the things that you need to remember about this is that when you paste it into this document, it pastes it as a picture. So that means that if you decide, or if you made a mistake, or if you need to change something about your data, what you would have to do is go back to your spreadsheet and fix whatever it is that you need to change in the data table, redo your graph, and then copy it over again, because it's only a picture on this document. So make sure that you don't get rid of this spreadsheet when you're done, because in case you might need to change something. Now the final step for us is to make our averages graph. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually take some of this table and we're going to copy it and make a separate table. So first thing that I'm going to do is highlight the top row where it says trials and all my wing shapes. I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to go down right underneath it and paste it again, because I'm making a separate table. And this one is going to be just about the averages. So I'm going to copy the averages row and put it right underneath the one that I just made. And you'll notice that it pastes the numbers with a lot more decimals. That's OK. We don't need to mess with that because we just want it to have the raw data in there for our graph. Now that I've got my second data table that just shows averages, I'm going to make another graph. So just like before, I'm going to highlight the stuff that I want, go up to Insert, and I'm going to insert another uh, chart. And just like before, I need to select some key things. This time what it's going to do is it's going to be just about averages. It's got my wing shapes put in there. And everything is already pretty set up the way that I need it to be. So I'm going to insert that. Scroll down a little bit so I can see it. And just like before, what you're going to need to do is make sure that your axes are labeled, make sure that you've got a title on there. But for sake of time, I'm just going to copy it over. So Control C back over to my Google Doc, and I'm going to paste it in there. Remember, this is just pasted as a picture, so I'm, going, I'm doing this for sake of time, moving kind of quickly, but make sure that everything with your title and your axes are all labeled before you do this. Again, I'm just going for sake of time. And you've got your averages graph. The last step of this is now that you can see what your average is all about, it looks like wing shape 2 was much more successful, followed by wing shape 1. Wing shape 3 was not very successful as far as hang time. So now that you've seen your data, you can go back up to your paragraph section, and you can write about what your results were in Word. So you would start with, and I'm now going to go back to the document that shows the instructions. Make sure that you're doing a few things. The first one is your overall results. Talk about your actual averages for each group. These are some possible ways you can start. And your second paragraph should be explaining any qualitative information. So as an example of what you would be doing here, you would say, uh, for the first uh, wing type, the average hang time or flight time was, and then make sure you're putting in the right numbers, so it looks like 3.5 seconds, 3.5 seconds. and you would then go on and talk about for the second and the third trial, so you keep typing. For the second paragraph, what you would do is you talk about any qualitative information. So for example, uh, during the uh, trials for, the, for wing type 3, maybe what happened was that the, the plane kept doing a nosedive, so that's a qualitative piece of information. The flights would uh, the flights would nosedive for each trial. So then you would explain actually what you saw. So once you have your results section put in there, a couple of other things you want to make sure underneath your data table, remember how we didn't put in any units? One of the things that you're going to need to put in there is an explanation of what the units are. So what you would say is all measurements in seconds. This way you're explaining what your units are, but you are not, but you were able to use these numbers in your data table. Now you've got some beautiful tables, you've got a, a few charts, and once you're done with your paragraphs, mine are incomplete as it stands right here, you have a high quality results section. Good luck!